Most people in the world are looking at how do I make a life worth living or time worth having, and most people do try to do so. Unfortunately, today we have colleges that are putting out students who graduate who don't always find their way. They don't find their way through college because no professor takes an interest is somewhat truthful, but oftentimes career advisors don't know how to do this, and therefore we have children who leave college with no prospects. When you talk to a college senior about what they want to do or where they want to work, a lot of them say, I don't know, and I'm not worried, but then they are worried, but they don't want to talk about it truthfully. I usually encourage them to get on LinkedIn. I usually encourage them to pay attention to what they can win in terms of the free version of those things so that once they get to the point of graduating, they can use their money in a different way, perhaps to upsell themselves in that network if it really works. If it doesn't really work, they have to find a different way to go. I also tell them that they need to think clearly about where they want to live, what kind of lifestyle they want, what they want to do for fun, and to choose their cities of where they're going to go next based on that interest. In life, we have moments of time to decide we're going to leave what we're doing and move away, even if we loved where we lived. I used to absolutely adore the townhome in which I lived in that was owned by Steve Schutz Builders. He only had a handful of properties in the community, but he was always very professional most of the time and kind to me. We rarely had a problem, and the few times we did, he came almost immediately himself or sent his guy over that I barely remember now, and they fixed it for me. What I can tell is that he was very good about what we did. We had a one-page contract, and we re-signed it for several years in a row, and then we just didn't have one anymore. It was just a verbal agreement and just a, hey, I need some more money. It's like, okay, here's your money, and that was that. There was a point, though, that some of the time of what was going on around his properties was making it harder for me to handle it. We were also getting to the tail end of our business, and I was beginning to lose some things, and that's not important today. What I can say is that I could see the writing on the wall for the business, that if I was losing a life mate who was a part of that business, then I might not want to continue it in the same way. But I had a lot of content, a lot of intellectual property that was not allowed to be taken by anyone and sold in any way. At the same time, I specifically chose not to be online with my intellectual property, although it was a great suggestion by someone that I loved. I did not feel it was appropriate, because what I see on the online channels of people teaching Japanese is that they're actually showing inappropriate language, because they're young people and they've never worked in business. It's true they might be natively bilingual because one of their parents is Japanese, or a grandparent is Japanese, but the reality is they don't speak polite Japanese. At the higher levels of our program, students learn polite Japanese. And the truth is, in life, even in being born Japanese, you learn guttural Japanese, you learn your country fried Japanese from where you live, in your, in your village, and then eventually you learn, of course, polite Japanese that society uses, through your language skills and studies classes, and then you move yourself into professional skill sets where you learn other language and stuff you go in with because your vocabulary is built to the hilt. For me, I had very important purchased vocabulary lists and books that are right for me. And if those have gone m missing, if those have gone pilfered, if the police have taken them, I'm going to sue them into the fucking floor. Because nobody in that uh, complex, that storage unit, that I was paying for until my mom lovingly paid for it for me, had any right to go into my property. And at no time did I get information that something was going on there. But what I kept getting lied about by siblings and by their people who allegedly worked there was that somehow I did something to make them feel uncomfortable. I don't think so. What I think is that those people or my siblings were stealing from me and they were trying to get out of that agreement. That's what people do. They lie, they steal, and they cheat people out of their life goods. And that's not okay. I'm really sorry if you have failed to produce a life for yourself. I'm really sad for you if you have not figured out how to produce that life in 20 hours a week like I did. But when I lost my wife, where were you for me? What did you do? Why did you do it? And how did you do it? You see, we can ask people those questions. What did you do, Jellybean? Why did you do it? 
how did you do it? Now, how do you feel about it? You see, we have to take responsibilities for what we do in life. And what we do is impact lives. And when we impact a life and then we just go play with, oh, whatever, I can replace you. You're completely like everybody else. That's a lie you tell yourself.